Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel Outside the Target Demographic. Today I'm going to be doing a video on a new used eBay purchase and that is the Victorinox Midnight Mini Swiss Champ. Let's get started. I happen to own both the first generation and the second generation mini champs. We're going to start with the first gen. The first gen has your basic pin blade. It has a nail cleaner as well as nail file. It has what the internet uh, says is a orange peeler or it's a pharmaceutical tool for pulling the cotton out of a pill uh, bottle. I find that the geometry on this guy makes it fantastic for the clamshell uh, plastic packaging that a lot of things come in. It also works great as a draw cut box cutter. Finding um, quite a bit of use with that one. And we also have, that is the cuckoo clock. Everyone should own one. That is the grandfather clock. Everyone should own one. And I finally have them synchronized. This is a secondary blade, a safety blade. I think it's called a sheep's foot is the um, dimensions there versus the pin blade, more of a straight uh, belly to that one. And that's it on that side. On this side, we have a cuticle pusher. A They say it's a pharmacy spoon. It's for collecting up small amounts of powder. Um, cocaine spoon, as some people have come to call it. It also works as one of the thicker implements as a flathead screwdriver. On this one, we have a ruler in both standard and metric. We have the scissors, one of the best in the business. And that's it for your mainline tools. We also have the standard tweezers as well as standard toothpick. The second gen, we have the same pair of scissors. We have the reason I bought this one. This is a uh, three tools in one. It is a magnetized Phillips screwdriver, a wire stripper, and a cap lifter. My primary carry on my keychain was the Midnight Manager and the most used implement was the three-in-one multi-tool. So now I have that on the second gen Midnight Mini Champ. Standard blade, and that's it on this side. On this side, we again have the uh, cocaine spoon, uh, pharmacy spoon. We have the standard and metric ruler. I find this is very useful for determining uh, tire depth, tread depth on your tires. We have the draw cut blade or the um, pill bottle cotton puller or the orange peeler or, or, or. We have the sheep's foot blade again. And we have the nail file with the nail cleaner. So if we look at the layering of these two, we're gonna see that the Gen 1 is about, um, I would call it half a layer, maybe one layer. It's gonna be the thinner one that just has the uh, blade, but it is just the least littlest bit thicker. Now you'll notice the second gen's red scales are twice as thick. And that's because with this one, we have your standard implements. With this guy, you need to make space for the ballpoint pen, which itself is uh, already a thicker diameter than the uh, scale tools there, plus the mechanism to move it. And then the flashlight has to store a battery and have the LED. So it's um quite a bit thicker overall, maybe 20%, 25% thicker, quite a bit heavier. Let's go ahead and get the scale out and we can run some numbers on that. So first up is the first gen. And we're looking at one ounce. 
or 30 grams. And next up is the second gin. Again, this is with the flashlight and pen, so it's going to be a little bit heavier than the standard one. We're looking at 1.4 ounces or 42 grams. So I got both of these off of eBay. This one I've had for maybe three years now. I do like how small it is compared to this one. Um, it is quite a bit lighter as we see. But again, the tool that I use the most on my Midnight Manager is the Phillips. So I went ahead and got this for myself. Um, this one, we're gonna go ahead and still snappy. I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. What we're looking at is um, it's a you know eBay purchase. So we have some scuffed up scales and we have a little bit of rust, which I don't know that I've ever seen rust on a stainless steel Victorinox. A lot of people say the steel is softer than others like Leatherman, which I believe is the case, but they use more chrome, uh, chromium, I believe, in the uh, chemical makeup of the steel. And that is why they are so unprone to rusting or uh, tarnishing. So. To see a little bit of rust on this guy, um, kind of interesting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, unaggressive and work my way up. I'm going to try going at this guy with um, a toothbrush and uh, dish soap. And we're going to see what we can clear up. I imagine I'm going to need to be a little bit more aggressive with the pits of rust on this guy. But I'm going to attempt to clean this guy up. We'll see what we're working with. We'll move on to maybe polishing some of the scuffs away. If you have any insights or experiences with that, leave that in the comments section below. I think I'm just going to start out with, um, what is it, baking soda and water and uh, get more aggressive from there. And uh, after that, we're going to see what we can do to maybe polish these scales up. I've seen a couple of videos, Felix Imler, the uh, king of Victorinox knives on YouTube, has a video on it. So I'm going to go ahead and follow along with that. But let's see how much nicer I can make this 50% uh, off eBay purchase. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, this guy cleaned up pretty well. When I initially opened it up, as I previously showed, this was a used item off of eBay. And uh, we had quite a bit of rust, a little bit of what I thought would be some surface pitting. Um, and I was trying to figure out if I would have to get a little bit more aggressive with like a Dremel or something like that. And you can see all of the implements shined up pretty nice. And the only spot of rust I have remaining is on the orange peeler here, which I have since learned that uh, it makes a fantastic package opener. Uh, but we have a little bit of rust right there. The rest of it came off with very minimal uh, work on my part, which is uh, greatly appreciated. And that was just by using a alcohol prep pad. Uh, I believe I left it in there so you can see the pad actually got a little dirty, which means the dirtier the pad is, the less dirty the knife is. So all it took was um, a fairly abrasive alcohol prep pad and the rubbing alcohol that was on it. And all of these tools slicked up pretty nicely. The next thing I ended up doing was um, I could use some metal polish or something like that to clean these guys up and uh, Occam's razor, you know, the least uh, aggressive, least invasive way to do something. Start that one first. You can always escalate, but it's harder to uh, put metal back on after you removed it. So I thought to myself, self, I need something pretty uh, abrasive, um, something very rough, something very coarse, something to uh, remove shards of metal off of... Uh, the, the knife here. And I found that my work had a couple of rolls of some material that they put in the bathroom for some reason. 
So if your work is anything like my work, the incredibly rough, low quality, half ply toilet paper actually worked very, very well. So all I had to do was put the rest of the implements away. We're gonna go after the uh, cuticle pusher. And I just uh, started going at it, polishing it. You don't wanna just go in a back and forth uh, orientation that's going to cause some scoring and it's going to look rather obvious that you had to do something to it so I'll try and spin it in my fingers and I'll try and move the tool as well we'd rather have circular motions than uh, up and down motions we're not trying to cut through something with the saw we're trying to polish something up just like you're trying to wax your car and just by doing that of course, this is not the uh, first time I've done that with the half-ply toilet paper. Um, but it, it actually cleaned up real nice, so I'm very impressed by that. The next thing I did is, since it worked so well on the metal, I went ahead and tried using it on the surface of the scales. And from the beginning of this video to uh, where we're at now, I'm sure you can notice there is a difference in the reflectivity there. You can still see some scars and pitting in what I would call character. Um, I have a personal pet peeve with a lot of YouTube channels. This is the best Swiss Army knife ever and you should use it all the time. And it's brand new. You can see the packaging sitting right over here. They've never used the thing. They don't know anything about it. So uh, the fact that this has some battle damage is fine by me. I'm never going to get that completely removed unless I get new scales. And after an hour of it swinging on my keychain, it's not going to matter anyways. But uh, by using the toilet paper on that, and you're going to have to be a lot more aggressive on it. But uh, I did use the alcohol prep pad to wipe this down as well. It gave it a weird... Uh, discoloration I think um, the rubbing alcohol had a bit of a chemical reaction or probably more likely pulled any moisture out of the plastic that it could but um the the point of it is you don't really need any kind of special polish or sanding wheel or break out the Dremel or anything uh, honestly just rubbing it on your pant leg as you're watching television or on your seat cushion your uh, couch cushion something like that would probably be plenty to uh, shine it up a bit so this is my current collection of 58 millimeter knives we have the SD classic currently being borrowed off of my wife's keychain this was a uh, anniversary gift the next up is the midnight manager next up is the Swiss champ mini um, first gen and the mini Swiss champ second gen and uh, this is the midnight one because again we have the light so um, we have a couple different sizes going on here and I will roll in the scale we're going to go ahead and go through the weights but we're looking at a wide degree of thicknesses with these guys the Swiss or the um, sorry SD classic will keep rolling in as the standard honestly the gen one um mini champ here is relatively thin for its tool set you miss out on the flashlight and you miss out on the writing pen but uh if you don't see yourself using those too often or you have a dedicated flashlight for your keychain i guess you won't necessarily require those and then of course our thickest of boys is the um, second gen mini champ and it is a I believe it's the only three layer so it's going to be focus it's going to be about three times thicker than the metal tool set not including the um the scales and the scale is going to be quite a bit thicker on this guy to make way for the flashlight and ballpoint pen but um it is kind of interesting too as I have these sitting here the orientation of the keychain ring is um, different for each one of them. Kind of weird. One thing I'll notice with this is it will usually be hanging from your keychain uh, ring, right? 
your knife is actually going to deploy upwards if it's hanging from your keychain. Versus, I'm finding with these two guys, I can leave this on my keychain and this will have enough reach that I can literally leave it on my keychain and cut the box. Or I know that when I pull this guy, my knife is going to be pointing away from me. So it's one of these two sides kind of thing. It's a way for me to uh, orientate with the knife a little bit better. Let's figure out with this guy. So we're going to have one of them. This is the first gen uh, mini champ. We have one of them opening up towards me. I believe the other one is on the same side but pointing away. So that's kind of nice in that that's kind of the same as the big boys. You'll have a bigger knife pointing one way and on the same layer you'll have the smaller knife. So the orientation doesn't really matter. That's the same on this one. On the same side, the we'll call it left side at this point, we have a blade and on the other end of it we have another blade. I do not believe that is the case as we go through to the second gen. The layout is completely different as well. We'll go through that here shortly. But um, that is not a knife. That is a knife. That's a knife. Uh, <laughs> do we know it's not that one? It's going to be this one. So on the second gen, the knives are both going to be at the same end. And we'll uh, put it right about there. So you can see the, uh, the size differences there, which again is different from the layout on the first gen. Kind of weird that they would switch that up. Uh, honestly, if I were to stay true to my logic, the fact that while it's hanging from my keychain, the knives are pointing away from me is actually the uh, way that I would want that. And I do like that, uh, let's see, essentially, if I'm pulling the one on the left side, we have there and no, that logic doesn't hold because this one's closer to the right side and they kind of bury the knife where it's not on the last layer they're not on the same layer as each other this one's a little more in the middle of the tool versus this one that is the outermost layering so there's going to be a bit of a learning curve with that um, but let's go ahead and throw each one of these on the scales your size and uh, weight will vary because I do have the keychain connection on two of these and um, that is going to affect the weight. But let's go ahead and see what the differences are there. And first up is the SD Classic. We're looking at 20 grams. This thing weighs nothing. And yet it has a very functional tool set. So you have your blade, you have your flathead screwdriver, uh, the SD in the classic actually stands for screwdriver, and that is um, a flathead here versus, I'll show you later on through the video, what the typical or the original classic non-SD would have a different implement there. But you have a nail file here, you have a screwdriver, you have your blade, you have one of the best pairs of scissors in its class, I would say, for a tool this small. You have, they count the uh, key ring as a tool, which it does work pretty well as a wire bender, the uh, loop as well. And then you have your tweezers, which are fine enough to pull individual hairs. And your toothpick. And all that for the cost of 20, 21 grams. Uh, let's line that up. <laughs> let's see, we'll go here. So you can see it's just over two inches. There's a reason this is one of Victorinox's best-selling knives. It's very small, it's very lightweight, it's relatively cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks, so you're paying a dollar per gram. But you have a very usable tool set, and it only expands up from here. Next up is the Midnight Manager. So this one is going to have the same pair of scissors, the same blade, the same nail file with screwdriver, and the only addition here, and the reason why it's a little bit thicker, is going to be the addition of the second layer, which gives you the... Uh, we have a cap lifter, we have a wire stripper, and we have a magnetized Phillips screwdriver. So 
a very useful tool set for me. This was my keychain carry before I got the second gen um, mini champ, and we will see if uh, it will be usurped or not. And then you have your pen and you have your flashlight and all of that for the weight of um, 10 grams more. So you're doubling the weight and adding a little bit to the thickness on this guy. Let's go ahead and four snaps. I love it. So you have just the least littlest bit. Why would you not focus? You know exactly where I'm telling you to focus. You have just a half layer more for thickness. Again, don't count the scales. That's a little unfair. These have different tool sets. So it would be slightly uh, thicker and it would be probably a little bit less heavy than you're seeing here because again that one has the um, premium or upgraded uh, scales on it as well as the keychain dongle. Next up is the Mini Champ Gen 1. We're looking at 33 grams so essentially the same weight as the Midnight Manager. The thicker scales with the different tool upgrades and the fact that it has the keychain dangler is um, going to add to the weight of this one. But we're now stepping up the tool set. Before we only had the four implements on this one, we have the pen knife, the safety blade or emergency blade, the, uh, they call it an orange peeler, or I believe it was originally for pharmacy. You'd be able to pull the cotton out of a bottle to get to your pills. This is what the original classic had. So you have the same nail file, and you know what, for giggles, we got her, she's right here. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Right here. So I would say the surface area for the file is actually a little bit longer on the original one. If I line up this end, there you get a little bit more throw with the first gen. And then you can see it tapers down into a point. And the idea there is originally that would be for getting stuff out from under your fingernails. They decided that they could make that into a flathead screwdriver instead, maybe a little bit more useful. Although this one being rounded actually does work as a, uh, well, I guess it'd be two dimensional technically, but a one dimensional Phillips driver. You could get that into a larger size Phillips screw and be able to turn it. So the classic will have this rounded off boat uh, front kind of look to it. And then the SD classic will have the screwdriver uh, tool on the end of it. But moving on, that is a cuckoo clock. Everyone should have one. You also have a ruler that has uh, metric and standard. It has inches and centimeters on it. And this one gives you the screwdriver that you were originally missing if they had put the SD Classic uh, nail file on there. Um, in my mind, I feel like that's a great way to delete weight and size is by etching this ruler onto the backside of this nail file. You would now turn this into three implements versus just the uh, the two each. Um, I guess you would sacrifice your uh, boat tail one, but you could always use the end of the knife or one of the other tools for that um, essential functionality. But I feel like they could have combined those. Next up is the cuticle pusher. And um, I believe that just about covered it with the tweezers and the toothpick and the uh, keychain ring there. And again, all of that is for the weight of... Thirty-two grams, which that is the grandfather clock. Everyone should have one. Thirty-one grams for the midnight manager. So, very similar in size. Uh, we will, well, in weight, anyways. We will determine the size right now. So the midnight manager again is going to have the different scale set. We have the um, pen and the flashlight versus the tweezers and. Uh, toothpick there. But as far as the metal layering goes, it's very nearly the same. And then the scales are going to be a determining factor. If I were to line up based on the bottom 
of these two tools, it looks like the Midnight Manager is going to be just a hair thicker. And of course their lengths are going to be the same size. The uh, orientation of the key ring will be different. Um, but if I put you here, we're looking at exactly half an inch versus a little bit shy of half an inch. So the first gen mini champ is going to be just a hair thinner. And now we're going to move on to the second gen. Second gen is 45 grams with my keychain hanger. And boy, do you feel that. So this has been my typical keychain uh, mini tool. It's 31 grams. We're boosting up to 44, so it's a third heavier, and I can absolutely feel, even with my keychain on my belt loop, that I have a substantially heavier tool on there. For reference, we're going to roll in, and once I get to it, a AA battery. And again, all of these, the links are going to be the same. So for those of you who have yet to purchase one, I say that because you should absolutely have one. Uh, you can tell by the shadows here and by the line that uh, you're looking at a little bit longer than a AA battery. And the thickness on the second gen Mini Champ is going to be thicker than a AA battery. Uh, for giggles, we'll roll in the SD Classic. You're looking about maybe half the width of a AA battery. I use a AA battery because everyone has one somewhere. The Midnight Manager, about the diameter of a AA battery. Um, this is a lithium battery, so it's not really going to be fair, but I uh, call it 15 grams versus the 30 that this one is. So it's going to be a little bit heavier than a standard AA battery, but that will give you an idea of a AA battery swinging off of your keychain. And then the first gen Mini Champ is a little bit less than the diameter of a AA battery. So there's a frame of reference for you guys. And again, with the first gen, we have a knife, the nail file, and uh, nail cleaner, the package peeler, the second knife, the scissors, the ruler with flathead, and the cuticle pusher versus the second gen. We have the same scissors, the addition of the uh, multi-tool here, the cap lifter, the wire stripper, the magnetized Phillips driver, standard blade, the nail file with nail cleaner, the secondary blade, the orange peeler package opener, the ruler with flathead, the cuticle pusher, the ballpoint pen, and the flashlight. Uh, this is the uh, Midnight Mini Champ. And you can see that you have, I believe the only one that they've added is the, uh, the triple tool there. And you're looking at 45 grams for the second gen with the uh, Midnight Editions versus 33. So far, I'm really liking the second gen Midnight Mini Champ. I'm going to tell you, it, it's a hefty boy. Uh, it is noticeable, the weight increase based on the other knives. But um, with the benefit of having a backup flashlight and um, the additional tool set, I use the three multi-tool uh, screwdriver here quite a bit, especially at work for getting into computers, removing components from computers, getting to the hard drive of computers, getting into all sorts of stuff. So the addition of this guy was absolutely necessary. It was actually the reason I relied more on the Midnight Manager over the Gen 1 Mini Champ is because of the missing uh, triple tool there. So now it's uh, added to it. So I will go ahead and try carrying this guy for a while. I'll report back with findings and um, we will see this in a follow-up video.
As always, this is Outside the Target Demographic. I appreciate your time. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below, and I will catch you guys in the next video.